Today, we have Gergely Berzi that is going to talk about non-reductive group actions and hyperbolicity. Um, I'm sorry, I just lost my uh, slide. Uh, can you see my slides? Uh, no. no, we can see the computer, I think. I see. So now I um, try to... You should do the uh, you are screen sharing, but you have to uh, new share. You should choose the file. Yes. Maybe you stop sharing and start sharing again. Stop share. And I share this one now. No, it doesn't work. I just... but, but when you share, you need to click on the file. Okay. On PDF file. You start sharing and you choose, it gives you the option to choose the file. Yes, indeed. And then um, and then you click on this file and should be, should be yeah, okay. But when I, it comes up here and then I, this is normally what I do and then it works. But okay, oh. let me. Let's uh, try again. Let me try again. Can you see something uh, now? I see your face. <laughs> okay. It's here actually, but it doesn't share. I don't know, I'm missing what's going on. So um, just let me leave and, and come back again in a second. Yep. Mm -hmm. Hi, Fabrizio. Long time no see. Good to see you. Did you manage to go to Gran Canaria or not? Yeah, yeah, I went. No, no, no. You, Fabrizio, you're asking me? Yes, yes. I, I went not to Gran Canaria, I, I went to Tenerife. Ah, Tenerife. Okay, so one of yeah. the. Uh, Actually, even worse than this, after this, I went to Moscow for a month. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> and then returned a long time ago. So it was like, uh, yeah, months ago. I returned months ago, yeah. Okay, now it's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. are you here? We can see the slide, but not here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you went to full screen or something. Sure. Yeah, I think that was the problem exactly. So. Okay. Ah. Okay. So. Okay. Um, well, now we see you. Okay, and you can see my screen as well. I hope. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Right. So thank you very much for the. Uh, opportunity to talk here. So this is a, a, a report on a recent work uh, done by uh, Francis and myself on um, non-reductive group actions and uh, hyperbolicity. So, um, and it's basically my talk based on uh, two, two papers available on, on, on uh, archive. Um, so I, um, when I talk about hyperbolicity, I like to uh, start with uh, some motivating example. And this is probably not the best. So I'm certainly not the best uh, introduction and motivation, but uh, I, I would like to start with a very simple example, which tells us that uh, if you have a curve of genus at least two, which means that the, you have canonical, it's a, it's a uh, uh, with a canonical uh, uh, amber uh, canonical uh, bundle, then any holomorphic map is a necessarily from from a, from a, and any entire holomorphic map is necessarily constant. So, what I mean by that, any holomorphic map from C to uh, to to this curve is is necessarily constant. So, and the proof is quite simple in this case because uh, if you have such a map, then it uh, factors through the universal cover, which is in this case a disk. And so this is a bounded uh, holomorphic function, which is a constant. So on the other hand, if you um, if you take a, a projective line or elliptic curves, they do admit uh, non-constant holomorphic maps. And there are some other, several other examples where we know that um, 
uh, these uh, uh, maps exist, like labeling varieties, uh, rationally connected varieties. The question is, uh, what could be the high dimensional analogs of this uh, very simple example? So uh, does somehow the uh, ampleness of the canonical bundle uh, determine the existence of, of uh, such a, a map? So we, uh, we take X to be a complex manifold of dimension N, and that's actually um, throughout this talk today. And we say that uh, this is uh, broadly hyperbolic if uh, there are no non constant entire holomorphic curves in X. So, um, <clears throat> for such a, uh, uh, there is a characterization using a Kobayashi uh, metric. So, Brody himself proved that uh, this is equivalent to saying that the Kobayashi pseudo metric is a real metric. And these hyperbolic varieties. Uh, uh, are especially interesting in uh, because of their expected uh, Diophantine properties. So Lang actually conjectured that uh, if a projective variety defined over Q is hyperbolic, then uh, the number of points over Q is finite. So um, there is a weaker version of this uh, hyperbolicity, which we call uh, weakly hyperbolic. So we say that X is weakly hyperbolic if uh, there exists an algebraic variety, Y, which is a proper sub variety of X, such that any uh, non constant holomorphic uh, uh, map has uh, its image in this sub variety. So this is actually something determined by the geometry of X. So it's not, uh, it's not saying that, uh, that uh, for any F there is such a um, sub variety. I'm saying that there is a sub variety that's for any F. The image sits in this sub variety, so it's 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 much stronger, right? So um, I'm trying to give you a brief overview of of uh, uh, of, of of the history of a problem which I'm not uh, an expert in. So, and I'd like to apologize uh, for any uh, uh, any uh, mistakes actually I make here. So I'm not, this is not my field of expertise. So, um, so let me start with the, the conjecture, the hyperbolicity conjectures. So the green griffiths uh, Lang conjecture uh, is from 1981 says, it's saying that uh, every projective uh, actual, uh, uh, variety X of general type is weakly hyperbolic. So, um, so we have actually, this is, uh, Kind of a far reaching, and it's a very strong uh, generalization of the problem we started with saying that if we have a, a, a positive uh, uh, canonical bundle, then I, this actually implies uh, weak hyperbolicity. This is a uh, actually, this is a uh, well, in some sense weaker, in some sense stronger version of the, of the, but certainly different from the Kobayashi conjecture from 1970 which tells you that um, it's about generic uh, hyper projective hypersurfaces. And it tells you that the generic uh, projective hypersurface of degree high enough. So if, if in, in, in any dimension and there is a, a limit dn, such that if the degree is bigger than this dn, then uh, this uh, generic hyper, then, then the generic hypersurface is broadly hyperbolic. So this uh, dn has uh, several, at the, at, you know, um, it certainly must be uh, conjecturally at least is a, is a linear function of n, and it expected to be after the work of uh, several people like Zeidenberg, Clemens, Ein, and Vosan, to be in these numbers like for d one is four d uh, and uh, d n is two n plus one for n equals two three and four, and uh, most probably it must be two n for n at least five right. So it seems uh, to be that there must be a linear bound uh, in this Kobayashi conjecture. The two uh, conjectures are uh, very strongly related and this is actually, uh, very, uh, uh, it's kind of, a, a consequence of a very, very strong result and, and a recent result of Reed and Young from 2018. So they say that um, 
if there is a dn such that the Greenfield's conjecture for hypersurface of dimension n holds uh, for degree at least dn so there is for in both conjectures there is a limit on it says something about uh, projective uh, hypersurfaces for a sufficiently high degree so if if we denote this limit uh, by dn in the Greenfield's line conjecture then uh, this theorem tells you that uh, this then the Kobayashi conjecture is true for hypersurfaces of degree at least d two n minus one. So this is a very surprising and direct uh, connection between the the two uh, conjectures. So, so in particular, this means that if you if you prove uh, the Greenfield line conjecture with uh, some degree uh, d n, then it's uh, the Kobayashi holds with degree d two n minus one, and this. Of course, in the case of a polynomial bound, this uh, means that polynomial bound for one implies polynomial bound for the other. So I'm, now I, I try to list some uh, milestones of this problem, which is a very rich uh, history. And this far from being complete, I'm not even trying to be complete here in any sense. So I really just try to refer this uh, beautiful paper of uh, Jean-Pierre, uh, which is based on uh, his uh, Takagi lecture from uh, 2000. 16, if, yeah, if it is 16. And then there is a book of uh, Simone and uh, Evan from, um, uh, which is the title is Hyperbolicity of Projective Hypersurface. So this is actually a very, it has a rich history and a rich uh, uh, literature. So the first uh, uh, positive answer to this conjecture uh, is due to McQuillan from 1998. Uh, he proved this. Uh, with this numerical condition that c1 uh, square minus c2 is positive. And then uh, in uh, meanwhile, I would say, uh, uh, Jean-Pierre, so Demai and CU, they, they worked out uh, the beautiful strategy using directed manifold and jet differentials and, um, and slanted vector fields, which actually is the strategy which really uh, worked out uh, uh, in the end. So we, I will, I will tell uh, some details of this strategy and, and uh, in some sense the proof follows this, actually follows this strategy. So, um, and see you prove the Greenfield's conjecture for hypersurface was high degree, where this high degree is not an uh, efficient, high, uh, so it's, uh, it's, uh, it's not an effic effective uh, degree bound, there is no effective degree bound. And then um, <clears throat> the first fact, uh, the lower bound for the degree came in in, in 2009. And uh, Viverio, Mack, and Russo, they proved this, uh, the Gingrich's conjecture for generic surfaces of degree 2 to the n to the 5. And these uh, degree bounds were later improved by several people, including myself. Uh, but all of these are exponential, double exponential, or triple exponential bounds. And the uh, polynomial bound seem to be far. In fact, uh, let me tell you that, uh, I, I will uh, mention this later, but uh, anyway, I, I think I, I will come back to this bound later. So, And then uh, <clears throat> uh, Jean-Pierre uh, proved uh, in 2015, Prove this uh, the Greenfield's conjecture in uh, in the optimal lower uh, degree bound uh, under some uh, under some uh, conditions. So if uh, X satisfies this variety satisfies a strong uh, general type condition that is related to certain jet uh, semi stability properties. So it's under some technical conditions uh, uh, the even the uh, optimum lower bound was achieved. Then uh, in 15, uh, independently, CU and uh, one year later, uh, Damian uh, brought back. So they proved the Kobayashi conjecture for sufficiently high degree, but this is not uh, uh, effective. These are not effective. Of course, looking back, now this follows from the results of Reed and Young, given that the uh, Green conjecture was proved, but uh, this was not known uh, at that time, of course. So this, this, um, uh, the, the proof of, of CU and Broback, they follow different paths. And uh, uh, then later uh, effective, and these are, these are again if expansion, uh, exponential uh, lower bounds. So, but effective lower bounds were worked out by uh, Deng 
which were later again uh, improved by uh, some uh, by, uh, uh, by Joel and, and Jean Pierre. So, so, uh, so uh, this is uh, some a very very brief uh, outline of the of this of the history of of this problem. And, uh, and today, uh, my plan is to report on, on the recent work where we, we proved this uh, conjecture, so the green griffiths lung conjecture, and then by the work of Reed and Young, uh, we also, uh, this, uh, the Kobayashi conjecture for uh, generic uh, hypersurfaces with polynomial degree. And, and, and to do that, I will try to explain elements of the strategy which strategy goes back to the 19th and and uh, and then uh, it was also followed by uh, the paper of Diverio, Merkel and Russo to prove the first effective lower bound of, for the green griffiths lung conjecture. So the, this this uh, strategy is actually, this uses uh, jet differentials and the jet bundles. So what what uh, is kind of this, the central object of the strategy. So. Whenever you have a, a map f from c to, to this variety x, uh, within, you can write it in local coordinates locally. t is a local coordinate at uh, and c. Then we have n coordinate functions, and and we write this curve in uh, in this uh, in this uh, local coordinates uh, z1 up to z1 and on x. So now we can define the k jet bundle, which is just I denote it by j k of x. These are just really just as a set as the k-jets of holomorphic maps from C to X, which of course fibers over X uh, by sending a, a map to the uh, to the image of zero under the map, right? So that's actually a fibration, sending fk to f of fk of zero. So um, what are the fibers? So for a point in X, the fiber is just basically taking the first uh, K derivatives of, of a holomorphic map uh, from C to C uh, uh, N in this case, the dimension of, of X is N. So um, in other words, this is just, the fiber is just a nice vector space. Uh, it's, uh, you can think of this as being uh, N by K matrices, you put, um, uh, the derivatives in the columns of, of a matrix, and then you get the n, n times k mat n by k matrix, right? So, um, but the interesting thing about this bundle, first of all, this is not um, okay. So, so the, the interesting thing is that there's a natural action of of, uh, of reparameterization action on on this bundle. I denote this by J diff k in this uh, today. So diff k is just uh, as a set is a, uh, you see, uh, I, I introduced this notation J k one n. This is just the k jets of maps from C to C n. It's, uh, it's just a vec this vector space here. So, but if this, uh, if, if n is equal to one and we assume that uh, the first derivative is non-zero then it actually gives you the polynomial reparameterizations of of, uh, of C at the origin. That's, that's what I know by diff K. So it's the K jet, so this uh, polynomial reparameterizations of, of uh, the complex line at the origin. Why do you call it diff K? I mean, these are mm -hmm. complex numbers, so. Yeah, um, I don't know. This is just traditionally we call that uh, diff uh, in, in the original paper with uh, Andras Sanesh. Uh, maybe it's not the best notation for that. It's just really what I'm, I mean by that is that uh, it's just the polynomial, polynomial because you see, um, um, I mean, yeah, I, I don't think, I don't know. I don't think I can give you a very good answer to this. So, so uh, but it's certainly what I mean by that is just, um, so it's certainly, it's local diffeomorphisms, right, of, of the complex line. So, but it's just really polynomial ones. Um, so, um, so, 
it acts. This is a very simple group, right? And it acts on 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 this uh, gel bundle fiber wise. You, this is the fiber, right? So it just acts uh, by uh, uh, composition, right? So if you take um, uh, F to be uh, an element of 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 um, of this, uh, you know, a, a point in the fiber. It's just an element of here. That's given. And then, and we take an element of this group, which is just a polynomial of degree k. Then uh, the action is is just uh, it's it's uh, it's the following. So we, this is uh, high school mathematics. So you 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 sub you com you compose these two, right? So you take uh, you you substitute phi of z into f. So and that what you get is actually you write it in this basis f prime f double prime f to the k. So the and then you get this you get this matrix. So it's just basically an action. It's a linear action. It's a linear action. It's a uh, post multiplication by a k by k matrix group, um, and that uh, in in this case is given elements. Given entries given by the the uh, by coefficients of of this element phi, and each entry is just polynomial in this in these uh, alpha i's. So what you can see that this is a <clears throat> This is a matrix where in the first row we have uh, k, the k, uh, it's kind of parameterized along the first row. This is, we can say that these are parameters in the first row and all the other entries are just polynomials in the in the in in this alpha one, alpha two and alpha k, right? So we can see that there is a diagonal uh, C star where the weights are, so this is alpha one, alpha one square, alpha one cube, alpha one to the k. So the weights are somehow one, two, three up to k. So if you take um, the, the, the unipotent radical of this group is just by taking off of one to be one. And then uh, this, uh, and, and then um, this is a unipotent radical is actually normalized by the C star, uh, which is the diagonal C star. So this is, is actually really a semi-direct product of, of, of the unipotent radical and the diagonal C star. So, so it is very important this structure actually. So it's not just a unipotent group, but there is a C star uh, which normalizes the unipotent uh, group. So the... I think it's contained. UK has more parameters than uh, <clears throat> NK. Uh, so UK, what I mean by UK is this uh, group where you take off of one to be uh, one. So it's a unipotent group. Okay. Yeah, it's a you reported, not the reported. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah exactly. Not the so, full upper triangle. No, 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 no. No, it's 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 it, you know when you take alpha one to be one, and then you take the this uh, matrices for all alpha two, alpha three, alpha k. That's a that's a group, and that's a unipotent group. So. Um, So what's the strategy? So we're coming back to the strategy now. So we have we defined okay. So we defined the uh, uh, this jet bundle, and there is an action of this polynomial reparameterization group on fiberwise on this <clears throat> on this bundle, right? So what <clears throat> what's the strategy? So so we can see uh, we can consider like algebraic differential operators on X as polynomial functions on J K X, right? So in 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 locally in uh, if you use this uh, multi-index notation, then such a polynomial function is just a polynomial uh, function of f prime, f double prime, f to the k. So it's a sum of uh, with some, uh, you know, these are just the holomorphic uh, coefficients of uh, polynomials in, um, oh, sorry, it's a sum of some uh, monomials in the f uh, in the derivative uh, multiplied by holomorphic coefficients. So, um, so and and of course because we have this uh, uh, action, this diffeomorphism group, or what I call uh, polynomial reparameterization. So this diff k group, this c star sits in this diff k. So that gives you a, 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 a grading of this. So so we can talk about homogeneous uh, uh, polynomial functions with respect to the c star action, and they're just these are the ones, right? So the homogeneous degree m uh, monomial uh, polynomials are polynomials q such that this equation holds. Now, so uh, Green uh, and Griffiths already defined uh, uh, 
and observe that the that this uh, so they define this sheaf of algebraic differential operators of order k and weight in degree m as a, the set of these polynomials which are homogeneous of degree m and they actually uh, denoted by uh, this is e k m g g g g stands for green griffiths and then it was uh, demai who actually observed that it's um, it's uh, it's better to take uh, the uh, kind of the not all differential operators, but the uh, or jet differentials, but the ones which are invariant under this uh, uh, parameterization action. So, so uh, he defined uh, this uh, bundle of invariant jet differentials of order k and weighted degree m. This is by is just e k m now. It's a sub bundle of as a sub sheaf of e k m g g. And the elements of these are just um, elements here. So these are polynomial functions, which are invariant under the uh, uh, reparameterization action. So in other words, this is written out here. So if you, if you take Q, this is, uh, this is an element in EKM if this equation holds, right? So for any uh, phi in this uh, diff K group or reparameterization group, uh, uh, the it's invariant up to of course the, the scalar right so now intuitively what we have is the following so so uh, so if you take the sum of these uh, uh, polynomial rings right so you get an algebra uh, that's uh, it's in other words these are just uh, the sum of uh, this is a u invariant uh, part of this. Uh, of the of the Green Griffiths bundle, and uh, so you can think of that as uh, the the diff uh, diff invariant uh, polynomial functions on the jet bundle, and that is actually what we want to think of. So we, we would like to think of this as as being as as usual, right? So the invariant thing should be somehow uh, functions on the quotient, and the question is, what do we mean? By that, right? So, what do you mean by this quotient here, right? So, this 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 line here is 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 not uh, rigorous in any sense. It's just kind of intuition. What we would like to believe that if you take this, uh, well, this is actually a great a, a, a graded ring, then it's actually just given by uh, some functions on on a quotient. So, a little bit more precisely, but certainly not precisely. What we uh, we want we kind of we would like to uh, get the meaningful projective completion of this quotient, right? Because it, it doesn't make sense in this sense here, right? Because this diffeomorphism group is is not reductive, as I will explain soon in in the next slide. So we want to uh, somehow we would like to construct a, a projective completion of this quotient in such a way that uh, if you take the uh, you know, which is endowed, of course, which is a projective, so it, it so that the, the the canonical bundle over that, so it's it's a projective completion sitting in some um, some uh, big projective space. So if you take the 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 the, um, the, the tautological bundle of, of line bundle over P and restrict it to that uh, completion, that the sections of that give you invariant jet differentials, right? That's that's what we normally mean by this is kind of a little bit more precise uh, or expansion of this line here. So, and so this this compactification should be a fiberwise compactification, and uh, I've known it by uh, curly x k. So it's it's a compactification which fibers over x, and in such a way that somehow uh, each fiber is is just a projective completion of of the fiber divided by diff k, right? So. So we need a, a fiberwise. Somehow we would like to get a fiberwise compactification, which is really naturally endowed with some line bundle, and the sections of this line bundle give you uh, invariants. So these elements of this uh, demai bundle, so the invariant jet differentials. Um, and why this is okay? Why why would we? Okay, I will actually come back why this is this is relevant for us, right? So I haven't told any, I haven't uh, said, said anything about uh, why this is, uh, how this comes to the problem of hyperbolicity so far. So um, 
So I will uh, probably refer to this uh, quotient as, as a, a moduli of k jets of holomorphic curves from now on. And so the fact is that, uh, and what this strategy tells us, as I will explain, that somehow the Green Griffiths Lang conjecture can be derived from a positivity of certain cohomological intersection numbers on this moduli space. And this is kind of more, it's absolutely, it's, 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 it can be turned into a, and translated into a, a algebraic geometry problem uh, dealing with cohomological uh, intersection numbers. So let me, uh, before I explain why, what uh, this has to do with the hyperbolicity question, let me tell you a, a, a few, something about this compactification. So, so there are three different compactification in, uh, of this quasi projective portion. So we talk about this portion here. So you have the jets, K jets of maps from C to CN, but there's this different, uh, this reparameterization action. And, in, and, and the first uh, uh, compactification, which was, uh, uh, which was uh, kind of used in, uh, in, uh, in, in the literature for over 30 years, is this uh, what we call now the uh, Demai sample bundle. So this is a tower of projective bundles, which is a, uh, which is a smooth compactification of, of that portion. And, uh, and in particular, Di Verio, Mac, and Russo used this uh, compactification in 2009 to give these uh, the effective uh, degree bounds. Uh, the, the problem with that, uh, we can actually, uh, because this is a really nice space. So it's, it's in some sense, it's just really a tower of projective bundles. So it's, it's relatively easy to, to perform an equivalent localization on that. So we can um, come up with a, a closed residue formula for intersection numbers, which, we, which I did uh, in 2011. And that actually what tells us that, that, we, um, that we can, uh, uh, then there's no way, I mean, uh, at least to me, uh, the, the, it tells us that, uh, I will explain it, that somehow this model, so this demi tavern, is not suitable for improving the, the bound from uh, exponential to polynomial. Now there's this other uh, second uh, compatification uh, is a natural geometric compatification is uh, of this quotient here actually. This is, turns out that uh, it, it is a, there, uh, this uh, quotient is an open subset on in a component of the, of the puncture Hebrew scheme of k plus one points on Cn. So this Hebrew scheme is not uh, really usable in general and, in, in, and in the, the puncture part, which is the, one, the part supported at the origin, that is not irreducible either. So they have several different components. We know that this is a, this is a really ugly space, but there is a distinguished component which we call the curvilinear component, uh, which is just the closure of the locus where the points come along a smooth curve, right? So that's, that's why we call this curvilinear. So this, this curvilinear component is highly, it's very, very singular, but it's still a compactification of this quotient. And somehow uh, coming from a completely different direction, uh, working on Tom polynomials and, and singularity theory, in 2012, we developed the residue formula for intersection numbers on this, on this uh, component of the Hebrew scheme. And then uh, we can use this formula to prove uh, the hyperbolicity conjectures uh, with polynomial degree bound, but up to some conjectures only. So the formula is not uh, well understood, not uh, enough vendors understood to derive the, the theorem, just up to some conjectures, which are positivity conjectures of, of uh, Richard Rimani. And, uh, and that's, uh, well, I would say it's still out of reach, these conjectures. Now, uh, as I mentioned before, this uh, reparameterization group is not reductive. So I just let me mention a few uh, uh, things about non-reductive group actions. But so for non-reductive uh, group H, uh, then we know that the invariant ring when H acts linearly on the, on the projective variety X, and then, then the ring of invariance is not, is not necessarily finitely generated. And uh, you the first example was given by Nagata. 
And so the project of the invariant is not a projective variety and, uh, and the image is not, uh, was not is, is just constructible of this uh, projection map. And moreover, even if this was uh, uh, finally generated this invariant ring, the geometry of this uh, quotient map is, is so the, the project of the invariants it's is kind of a natural candidate for the quotient. But even if this is this is this is uh, far in most cases actually is is far from uh, being a, a good uh, uh, space actually, uh, which describes kind of in any sense the geometry of the orbit space or the geometry of the orbit. So it's not certainly not the set of uh, S equivalence classes in uh, in in some semi-stable locus. But there is a class of uh, non-reductive groups uh, where actually this works out, and that's uh, and this is a theory which we developed. Uh, uh, so actually, was uh, developed in Oxford by Francis and 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 uh, and uh, and uh, several other people, including myself. So this is a this is a theory which uh, tries to uh, extend uh, Mumford's classical GIT. For reductive groups, for uh, for a wide class of, of algebraic groups, which we call graded or positively graded uh, algebraic groups, and I will explain uh, some details uh, in a second. And uh, this this theory actually gives you a canonical compactification of this quotient, and we can try, of course, to 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 use this strategy and see what happens with this uh, third, uh, this uh, non-reductive GIT type quotient, which is a third model for this quotient. It's a, it's a, you know, it's birational to, to both uh, the, the other two, but it's not clear whether there is, is there's no uh, morphism from one to the other. So these are just birational, but in some sense, uh, the, the the intersection theory of these theory of these non-reductive quotients is is way more uh, natural and way more easy, easier to, to handle than, than the ones, uh, the other two. So, so uh, let's come back to the strategy of uh, the Mai and CU. So, so as I said, assume that we have uh, this compactification curly XK, which is a projective completion of this, uh, of this quotient, right? So it's JKX is just a, a bundle and this uh, reparameterization groups acts fiberwise on this uh, bundle. And then uh, this has a, and assume that uh, this XK is just a fiberwise compactification. So it's, it, it, it's, it's a locally trivial bundle over X. And assume that it's uh, involved in this uh, uh, canonical bundle, then, uh, such that this, uh, you know, what, what we want actually, as, as I already indicated, is that uh, the sections of this uh, bundle give you uh, uh, invariant, invariant jet differentials. So they are, uh, of course, there is this uh, N, the capital N, which is, an, is a positive integer depending on the topology. And of course, when we talk about, uh, so it's, 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 it doesn't play any important, important role in this strategy. So the and and here is the link between uh, jet differentials and and hyperbolicity. So that's the fundamental vanishing theorem, which is due to Green Griffiths uh, and then proved by Demai and Siu. So assume that and that's the statement. Assume that uh, we have a, a global algebraic differential operator, which is just a global section of of uh, a differential operator which where the coefficients vanish on some ample divisor a. So these are just sections of this bundle. The demi bundle tensored by O of minus A. So assume that there is a, such a, a global section, non zero global section. Then for any uh, holomorphic uh, map F from C to X, of course, uh, if you have a map from C to X, then uh, uh, it automatically in, uh, induces a map FK uh, from uh, C to the K jet of X. And so this theorem tells you that uh, then. Uh, any such for any such map, the image uh, must satisfy this uh, this uh, differential uh, operator. 
So, uh, so the 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 uh, so this is a polynomial on on this uh, uh, jk of x, and p vanishes on 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 the image of the curve of of c. So, what is the uh, immediate corollary of this? Is that if you have a non-zero uh, global section of this uh, uh, of this uh, compactification x k twisted by uh, minus a, then uh, this uh, the image uh, sit must and and there is a and then uh, then then the image must sit in the in the zero set of the section. But you see that. Um, which means, in particular, that that uh, that the image of C under F must sit in the you know this, this is actually F K of C sits in the in the in in J K of X. But of course, there is a natural projection back to X, so so F uh, must sit uh, the image of C must sit in the projection. But if uh, C, uh, but and the question is whether we can find enough independent sections now such that the image of the intersection is is uh, gives you a proper sub variety. So if you find a set of uh, uh, sections sigma j, uh, then the image F C lies in the uh, in the in the projection of the intersection of these different. You know, for Z sigma j, they are in different uh, uh, jet spaces, maybe different case, but we can take the the maximum of those, and then we can take the projection of that locus to to x. So it must the, the image must sit in this y, and if we if the sections are um, uh, if these uh, differential equations which we choose uh, they are independent enough, then what we can hope for is that this uh, this y this projection is a proper sub variety of x. So that's that's somehow the 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 the, the key idea in 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 this in this strategy. So uh, it is crucial to control in a, in a very precise way the order of vanishing of these differential operators. Uh, as, uh, so it means that what this k actually is. And of course, there are uh, lots of technical details which I'm not talking about now. So should we think of k as tending to infinity as you take well, the intersection? Yeah, yeah, exactly. But you see, um, so. Uh, uh, what we will do actually is that it turns out that uh, that k must be must be bounded, right? So we, we we will in the strategy we will keep k be bounded, and the best we can do, the lower the k is, the better. Uh, and and we will in a second we will choose k to be equal to n, which is the dimension of the, of of x. So if we so I, I'm not. I'm not. There's no time to 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 discuss the the details of the strategy. But but what but this is the summary of that, and that's actually the theorem in in the paper of Diverio, Mack, and Russo, uh, improved by uh, Leonard Darundu. In and so it tells you that it, as I said, we assume that n is equal k now, and we assume that there is a data, and that's that's a very crucial thing here. How small this data is. This data is normally is a small number. Um, and but we want this to be not very small <laughs> because this comes in the denominator. But but so and then there is a, a capital D such that this bundle has a global section as as I mentioned before. So you have this twisted bundle uh, that has a non-zero uh, global section whenever the degree of x is bigger than uh, this d. So for high, so big enough, uh, uh, so for the degree big enough, where this degree depends on, on n, the dimension and delta, which we choose. And that is kind of, you see the data comes up here, how much you twist by this ample divisor. Then uh, the Greenfield's Lang conjecture holds with this degree bound. So it degree, if the degree is, is bigger than uh, both this degree d, so we have this global section, but also this other part, which is a tricky part, so it's five n plus three over data plus n plus two. So, um, it, but what you can see here is that is that is that um, we we get this Greenfield's conjecture uh, from by uh, 
by uh, establishing and by by uh, of uh, global sections of some bundle right and the question is how to prove the existence of these global sections then and then uh, the strategy actually uh, uses uh, algebraic Moore's inequalities which turns this problem of finding the global section into into intersection theory and that's actually where i come into this picture so so the, this uh, algebraic Moore's inequalities in the simplest form, they tell you that uh, if, if you have a holomorphic bundle over X and we write it as a, as a, as a difference of two NEF bundles. So L is the difference of F and G, both are NEF. Then there is a, uh, there is a, a global estimate. It gives you a lower uh, estimate of, of the difference of H0 and H1. This is the simplest form, as I said. So it just tells you that uh, we can guarantee the existence of global sections just by uh, by uh, proving that uh, this intersection number on X is is positive. So that's M to the so you have to actually prove that uh, F to the N minus N times F to the N minus one G this intersection number uh, is positive. So in short, what we see that the problem is reduced to um, Algebraic geometry and integration on X K, and uh, and just well in some we, well we just we, we we can study intersection theory and intersection numbers of of uh, of on on um, well on on X N right so this is uh, this will be something on X N which is a non-reductive quotient. So uh, the next, next, oh, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm really slow. So what I'm doing now is I'm trying to explain some elements of this non-reductive GIT, and then, uh, so, so, and, and then we will see how fast this goes. Actually, so, so we, um, as I'm, this is our group, this three parameterization group, which. Uh, I denoted by J and one one. This is a semi-direct product of C star and 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 the unipotent radical and the unipotent group. And uh, the interesting and very important uh, property of this group is that if you can see that uh, C star, the weights of C star along the diagonal in, is increasing, right? So it's one, two, three, up to n, which means that you, that the uh, the a joint action on of C star on the Lie algebra of U, which is just the upper triangular part of this group, the the weights of this uh, joint action is posit are positive, right? So if you take the Lie algebra of U, then the weights, for instance, in the first row are just one, two, three, up to uh, n minus one. And this is because these are increasing weights here. And so this is a situation which we like because uh, the extension of Mumford's theory actually works in this case. So we assume that uh, U is a graded unipotent linear, uh, lin uh, linear algebraic group, which is uh, which means that there is a C star extension of that such that C star acts on with positive weights on, on the Lie algebra of U. And we assume that uh, this group acts uh, on, on, on this irreducible uh, variety X um, with respect to some linearization, which is amplitudinization. So, and then we define these, uh, uh, the following subsets of X. So I will denote by X mean C star. This is just a, a subset of the mean, uh, of the fixed point locus under the C star action. These are those points which are fixed by C star and C star acts on, on the dual of L with minimal weight. So it's kind of, we call this the minimal weight space, uh, if you like. And X mean is going to be um, the uh, uh, kind of a bialyski bural stratum. So this is the, these are the points in X uh, which uh, under the uh, C star action, they flow into the minimum weight space. So that's this X mean is a minimal. It's kind of the, 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 sub, the, the open, open part of X. If it's irreducible, it's an open dense part of X. Which where the, each where the, which flow into X mean into this minimum weight space. So the theorem in this in the simplest case, which is we need now, it tells you uh, the following. So um, assume that uh, this uh, semi-stability equals stability condition holds, which in this case it means that 
if you look, if you sit in the minimum weight space, then uh, the the U stabilizer of this point is trivial. This is kind of the simplest situation. So any point in the minimum weight space uh, has trivial U stabilizer. Um, then, then what we have to do in order to, and that's that's kind of the trick. If we have to twist this linearization by a character uh, chi, which is just uh, a trivial on U, so it's just a homomorphism from U hat to C star, such that so it's just a shift by a character of this weight space, such that the origin sits in the uh, is 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 it sits uh, just. Uh, uh, so the, the, the lowest weight sits just below the, uh, the origin and the other one, so it's kind of, it, the, the, the origin sits in the lowest uh, uh, chamber for this, uh, for, the, for this cis direction, for the weight space for the cis direction. So we have this cis direction, so the, so the weight diagram is one dimensional, so we have some discrete weights on, on the line, and we want to twist, so uh, use this character, character to shift this picture in such a way that the origin sits in the in the lowest uh, uh, chamber. It's actually not enough to do this. So we have to. It has to. The origin has to be close enough to the to the the smallest weight, and that's when we this call uh, we, we call this a valid adapted linearization. So so we use this we use this uh, modification of the linearization, which doesn't modify the action, but the linearization is modified. So I don't mean I don't understand the yeah. origin. I mean if you have a it's this, this chamber, I mean, what is this chamber? So we take the C star action on X, right? So that's, uh, and we just take the C star weights, right? So which means that, um, uh, so the weight diagram is, is a one dimension, it's, it's, it's a one dimensional, uh, we have one dimensional weight space, right? So the weights for the C star action are just, um, um, points on the line, yeah. and then, but what is it? What is a what is a you know by twisting a character, which means it just means that you you shift this uh, you shift the origin actually in this picture. Okay, it's it's kind of you know that's a variation of GIT. So you can move the uh, okay. move the the origin uh, wherever you want uh, using the central. Um, So you, you divide by the smallest eigenvalue, so to say. Yeah, but it's not that. It's kind of the, uh, it's a little bit bigger than that one. So the, the origin must sit between the, the two lowest weights. And close enough to the smallest weight, but it's certainly not equal to the smallest weight. So the, the origin is not, so the smallest, yeah, it's, it's not, the origin is not uh, in, in the smallest weight. So, um, so you see, it's, 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 it's similar when you construct the projective space as a GIT quotient of CN plus one, the PN as a CN plus one uh, modulo C star. So in order to do that, you, you have a, you know, you have to shift the linearization just uh, having one coordinate on one side and the, all the other, uh, so it's a diagonal action. And then we just have to have one on one and all the other on the other side. And then, uh, the GI in, then the GIT quotient in this way of um, of um, of well it's 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 kind of the uh, the projective features of PM plus one mod C star is going to be uh, uh, um, PN the GIT quotient. So you, it's it's you can always yeah. Did I did I answer your question? Well, thank you. I think uh, I mean, but I mean, uh, this uh, this I mean, you just get integers for all these actions, right? So you're just uh, shifting. Oh, yes. So um, we work with rational characters in some sense, right? So. So, uh, which I did, yeah. So what happens is that whenever you have a line bundle uh, here, then you can take the same action, but with some 
sufficiently high powers of L, and then um, and then it means that just uh, kind of multiplies the the Weil diagram out. So when you move by uh, integers, it means that you can you know you can get by my stepping by integers, you can actually get in between the the two lowest weights. Okay, thank you. So, um, so, um, uh, so assuming that we make this uh, twist, then uh, we can we prove that this uh, ring of invariance is finitely generated. So the u hat invariance is finitely generated on x with respect to this generalization. And so uh, we can define this uh, non-reductive GIT quotient as project of the invariance. But then, and the, the, the nice thing is that in this case, this, uh, this is indeed a nice, uh, the exact generalization of, of the reductive picture because the, the, this project of the invariance parameterizes uh, S equivalence classes as I, I you know, this is a equivalence classes uh, for, uh, for the action on, on a semi-stable equals stable locus. So this is kind of the same as for the reductive uh, GIT. So the semi-stable locus is equal to the stable locus, and and uh, and and in fact the the quotient in this case is a geometric quotient, so it, it actually parameterizes closed orbits under the U hat action. And there is a hilbert mumford criterion which makes the this is uh, efficient because this uh, semi-stable equal stable locus in this case can be described using this. Uh, uh, Hilbert Mumford criterion is going to be this uh, Bialyski Birula uh, stratum uh, minus the U sweep of, of the minimum weight space. So, um, it, or in other words, you can write it exactly as in the reductive picture. It's the intersection for, for the, of the U sweeps for U running in, in, the, in the unipotent group of, of, the, um, of the torus. Uh, a semi-stable locus, right? Uh, and in this case, the stable locus is just C star, the torus is C star. So, and uh, even without this uh, assumption, which is, which I, which I refer as the stable, uh, semi-stability equals stability condition, there is a, a GIT blow up process where we can achieve this uh, uh, situation. Right, so, uh, the second part, so this is the construction part of the theorem. And the second part, which came actually last year, that was, uh, 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 is that how to describe this uh, non-relative GIT type quotients as uh, using symplectic uh, moment maps and the symplectic reduction. So it's actually a generalization of the similar picture in, in uh, for reductive quotients where the, uh, and then, so I'm trying to, can I ask how much time? Uh, do I have only one minute left? No, you started like a, a five minutes later. So you have a kind of a five minutes. Five minutes. Okay. So, um, so, um, so, so there is a, 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 the second part of the theory actually gives you um, a, a, a way to compute cohomology and intersection and numbers on, on these quotients. So, so uh, the setup is, is the same. So we have X is a projective variety uh, with a linear action of, of this uh, graded uh, U hat with respect to some ample Lyman or L. And then uh, this gives you a natural embedding of X into this big projective space, and uh, which gives a, a canonical linearization and, and the canonical U hat moment map. So what we divide, uh, what we mean by uh, a U hat moment map here is this um, mu U hat is just the composition of the origin of the G. So, so because of this embedding, actually, uh, this U hat has a natural embedding into natural embedding into GL, uh, in, into this reductive group, and we can compose the moment map is the GL moment map with the projection, right? So this projection is just is the projection of the Lie algebra of uh, GL onto the Lie algebra of U hat. And that actually gives you what we call a U hat moment map, is a map from X to the Lie algebra of U hat. And so the, uh, the theorem from last year actually tells us that 
the it's kind of the crucial uh, observation is that that uh, the the zero level set for this u hat moment map sits in the semi stable locus of for the for the action and then and of course it is u hat invariant so there is a natural embedding of of this u hat times the zero level set into the stable locus or semi stable locus is the same and that induces a homeomorphism of the of this uh, symplectic quotient sorry this uh, this quotient so s1 is just you know the maximum compact subgroup of u hat because that's just this uh, s1 sitting in c star so uh, uh, this quotient is uh, is homeomorphic to the git quotient which we constructed so it's exactly the same as for uh, as a statement is the same as for for the reductive picture where you have a uh, moment maps and and uh, if you take the zero level set quotient out by the maximum compact subgroup then uh, it's isomorphic to the git quotient by the complex subgroup the complex group uh, what is a little bit different here and it makes a, a it's the, the picture is a is a simplifies the, the picture is that in this case you have a natural stratification of the of this bialiski bureau stratum into the Minimum uh, into into the semi-stable locus and the use sweep of the of the minimum base space, and this actually allows us to compute, for instance, uh, uh, Betty numbers for the Poincaré series for for the quotients. Everything can be reduced into the Poincaré series Betty numbers of the minimum base space, which is kind of fixed point uh, set corresponding to the minimum weight. That more on um, so in, in, somehow the idea is that, and I, in, in, I just explain it quickly here, is that um, uh, from this actually we can deduce uh, intersection uh, numbers and homology of these non-reductive quotients following the idea of and the picture of uh, Sean Martin. Uh, so the classical picture looks like this. Um, this is based on a diagram which actually connects the, the GIT quotient of X by uh, a, the reductive group uh, and the GIT quotient of X by the maximum torus. And there is an intermediate space, which is just a, it's a, a quotient of the K zero level set of the K moment map by T. And this is a nice embedding and this is a nice vibration, which allows us to uh, derive these classical results, which tells you the connects the cohomology of uh, the G quotient and the T quotient in a nice way and also uh, gives you intersection numbers. So integration on, on the GIT quotient by G connects to in, uh, integration over X mod T. So a similar picture holds here and I will not give you the details, but you see um, what, what it, there's, these are the three statements actually, which, uh, which we can prove. So first of all, there is an, uh, a connection, a direct link between the cohomology of X mod U hat and, um, and X mod C star. So C star is, 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 is just uh, the C star in U hat. And uh, there is a direct uh, uh, formula to compute intersection numbers uh, on this uh, U hat quotient from intersection numbers on the C star quotient. And using these two, or using this one here actually, and, and, the, and the, the Jeffrey curve and localization in the, in the simplest possible case where we have a C star actions, we get that uh, we, we can derive residue formally for intersection numbers on, on X mod U hat. So, so somehow the upshot is that we can derive, uh, we can compute intersection numbers on, on U hat quotients um, using this picture. And then, um, uh, and then uh, this led, leads as the following theorem. I actually just stated the theorem here. So as I explained, uh, uh, the problem of the GGR conjecture can be reduced to, uh, to prove positivity of some intersection numbers on, on non-reductive quotients. And then uh, this, uh, using this non-reductive GIT model and, and the intersection theory which we developed last year we managed to prove this, uh, the hyperbolicity conjectures with uh, polynomial degree bound. Um, so I, um, and this polynomial degree bound is, is roughly uh, n to the six. 
So, and finally, I just, uh, let me mention that uh, there are several other problems uh, and, and, uh, and ongoing work uh, using this intersection theory of, uh, of, of, in particular, even for moduli of jets. So this uh, moduli of jets uh, also play important and central role in, in several other enumerative geometric questions. For instance, uh, there is now it's a work uh, which we can derive a new residue formula for Tom polynomials of context singularities. And then they are joint work, ongoing work with uh, Andras Senesh on tautological integrals or on Hebrew schemes and, uh, hyper, um, and counts of hypersurfaces with different uh, surfaces, Goethe type formulas. And another uh, direction of application of this theory is, is uh, constructing uh, moduli spaces for unstable objects uh, in a given GIT setup. So there, uh, there are, uh, I just listed here three uh, ongoing uh, work in progress. Uh, one with uh, Vicky Hoskins, uh, George Jackson and, and Francis in moduli of sheaves. Then Josh actually worked on moduli of unstable curves and, and uh, Elvis Hamilton is, has a recent and ongoing work on moduli of unstable Higgs bundles as well. This, this is just uh, really um, indicating that, that uh, uh, so there, are, there, seems, there seem to be applications of this, uh, of this theory. And, uh, and, um, and uh, in particular, even if this very simple case when the group is just a reparatization group, it, it has some uh, interesting applications. So I stop here now and then I think I already. Okay. So we can uh, first uh, thank the speaker. And uh, are there any question? A question. Uh, in your talk, you have been explaining how to uh, produce a lot of sections. Yes. But I mean, uh, of course, it was difficult in such a short time, but not why the locus yes. in the bundles projects to a proper Absolutely, object, right? Absolutely you're right. So I, I, I didn't even, I, I know, I, I didn't say anything about this part of the strategy, which is equally important, right? So this kind of goes back to see, uh, see you actually uh, wrote out this, um, uh, how to uh, it, it kind of working with slanted vector fields, it's kind of, uh, the question is really, if you have one section, if you have one global section of this bundle, right, which gives you one global jet differential, how to construct from that, how to construct other jet differentials, which are sufficiently independent of the, of the first one and, and the previous ones. And it kind of works in sort of in families using differentiation. And it's, it's, a, it's that part of the strategy I did yeah, I did not explain, but it's 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 highly non-trivial. So you mean it's similar to this proof uh, CO argument or what? Yeah. So so the so it's what I use actually in the proof is really uh, uh, the final form of the argument that I use is 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 the one which uh, appears in in the work of Diverio, Mecca, and Rousseau, mm -hmm. and. Uh, and uh, and that's that's and that explicit lower bound which they give there actually I, I can sh yeah I can go back so that's that's the that's that's actually in some sense this is the starting point of 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 uh, my work in this in this problem right so we have this lower bound and then uh, the question is uh, how to how to okay you thank know, you work on this okay thank you. Yeah. Other questions? So in uh, your approach uh, is going to be kind of, uh, you get the opt optimal uh, estimate you can get with your approach. Uh, your approach won't improve any further or? <laughs> so uh, it's, it's a good question. So whether we can further uh, improve the lower bound, right? Yeah. So. For that to 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 you see, uh, I don't I don't see uh, that it, there's it's certainly not uh, it's certainly uh, not 
doesn't follow immediately, right? So it's kind of the the uh, probably the 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 construction should the GIT construction should also be modified in order to get that to balance them polynomial. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it needs so so you see the whole thing is is kind of our part of this story is is constructing a new model for invariant jet differentials, right? Which which somehow captures much better in a better way the geometry of this problem, right? And in particular, you know, intersection theory works better in on that portion. So I, I presume that we really have to focus and work hard on 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 how to modify the model itself to get to, to get better bounds. I see. Uh, thanks. Other questions? So, if not, uh, we can uh, uh, thanks uh, Gergely again, and uh, and that's it for today. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.